Hey everyone, in this episode of Fix Your File, where I take your files that you send in to me and help show you how to fix them, we're taking a look at this file sent in to us by Steve from inside my Facebook group. Now this is a badge file that he bought off of Etsy. So he imported it into Vetric. Now he wants to create a badge number and a name down here at the bottom, but he wants to be able to change the badge number and the name down here to different names. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to add the text down here. And then I'm going to show you how to save this as a template and a way to make your toolpath automatically update when you change the text. So make sure you stay till the end to see how that works. So in order to create this file into a template, we're going to want nice organized layers. So up at the top here in our layer menu, we could see everything is on layer two here. And that's all the stuff we want to carve. So I want to separate this into a layer for the badge. We want a layer for the border. And then we want a layer for the text that we are going to add later. So since everything's on this layer right now, I'm just going to right click on layer two. I'm going to rename and I'm going to name this badge. Now everything is on the badge layer. But like I said, we want a layer for the border. So let's right click on our border and we want to move to layer and we want to go to a new layer and we're going to name this one border and then we're going to click OK. Now if we come up to the top, we have a new layer here called border and only that shape is on the border. Now the last layer we want to add is a text layer. So we're going to add new layer and we're going to name this text. Now we have a layer for the badge. We have a layer for the border and now we have a layer that we will put our text on. I'm also going to put this piece down here on the text layer because this may change in size depending on the amount of text you put in here. So let's right click on this and move to layer and we're going to add it to the text layer. And if we double check up here and go to our text layer, you can see now that's placed on the text layer. So let's bring that back. And now with our text layer selected, this is now our active layer here. So whatever vectors we create now is going to be on the text layer. So that's what we want to do. So we're going to add some text down here. So for this shape here, since we want the text inside this box, we can select this box and use this text within a vector box uh, icon here. That's going to allow us to write the text and keep it within this box here. So we want to do a center alignment on our text and then we want to type our text at the top here. So we're just going to make a placeholder here. So we'll do F name and then L name for first and last name. And we can pick a font that we want here. In this case, I am going to use this Tahoma font. And because that closely matches what we have up here. And then we can leave our settings all here the same because it looks pretty good within this bounding box. So I don't want to change anything. So we're going to click close. Now we have this placeholder here for our name and that's on our text layer. Now we have to do that in this box here as well. But since this box is curved, we have to curve the text with that box. So let's zoom in on that. So the first thing we have to do is make a curve to follow. So we could use this shape here, but since it's a closed vector, I like to use just one arc at the bottom to follow. So what I'm going to do is use our arc tool and we're going to make sure our geometry snapping is on and that will allow us to snap into this corner here. So I'm going to click once there and I'm going to come down to the center point here of the bottom of the arc, snap to that point, and then I'm going to come back to the end over here and snap to there. Now we have an arc place there. So we're going to close this. That is going to be what our text will follow on. And now for this, we're going to use the regular text here. So just draw text here. And for this spot here, Steve wants the badge number. So we're going to type in badge 
and then we'll just do one, two, three for a placeholder. And we're using the same font and we want to make sure our text alignment is to the center. And then you can adjust your text height. In this case, this looks like it's going to be pretty good for what we want here. So we're going to click close. And now we have to put this text on the curve. So with the text selected first, we're going to hold our shift key and select that arc we just drew. And we're going to use this button right here, text on a curve. So let's click that. Now you can see that arch the text there, but we want to center this inside of our box here. So I'm going to offset this a little bit from our line. So our offset distance here, let's try a quarter inch. And you can see that looks pretty good. Looks about centered. So we're going to go with that. But you can see our text is a little bit bunched up here. So we want that text spacing to be a little bit greater. So to fix that, we're going to go up here to our text spacing and we're going to drag this slider a little bit to the right and we can adjust that until it kind of fills the space there. And that looks pretty good. And we want to make sure our text alignment is in the middle and we want to align to the curve. So you can see that looks pretty good there. So we're going to click close to accept that. And now we no longer need that arc at the bottom. So we can select that arc and click delete to delete that. And now let's zoom out here. Now let's double check our layers. So we're going to go up to our layers here and you can see if we hide the text that hides the text we just added there at the top and the bottom, as well as the border around the text. And we bring that back. You can see they're back here. Now let's look at our border. That is the border around the sign there. And then lastly, the badge is the entire badge there. So let's bring that back. And also if we select anything on this badge here, you can see all of this is ungrouped. It's all separate. So we're going to group all this together so we don't accidentally move anything or edit anything that we didn't want to. So an easy way to group all this together, since it's all on the same layer, we're going to go up here. First, we're going to make that the active layer because if we group that on a different layer, it'll move the group to the whatever layer is active. So we want to make sure the badge layer is active here. And then we can right click on this badge layer and then come down to the bottom where it says select layer vectors. So we're going to select that and you can see that automatically selects everything on that layer. Now to group this, just simply type the letter G on your keyboard and that groups all these objects together. Now we have this entire badge grouped together. We have this text down here as a text item, as well as down here for the name. And then we have the borders here. So we can look at our layers again one last time and everything's separated. So now we're ready to create the toolpaths for this. So we're going to go over and switch to our toolpath tab. And you can see that Steve already created his toolpaths. So we're going to keep his same settings. The only thing we're going to do is adjust for our layers we just created. So he has a V carve toolpath to carve out most of the items here. So we're going to double click on that to open it. Now we are editing his V carve toolpath that he already has set up. So you can see he has a flat depth set for 0.115 inches. He's using a 90 degree V bit and he's using a quarter inch end mill clearance tool. So these settings look pretty good. We're going to come down here. The only thing we want to change is the vector selection. So you can see right now it's set as manual. We want to set this to automatic because whenever we change the text on this file, we want it to be able to automatically update with the toolpath. So that's why we're going to switch this to automatic. So let's go to selector and we want to do close vectors and we want to select the layers that we want to carve with this toolpath. So we want to carve the badge layer. So you can see when we check that there, it automatically selects the badge. Now with the same toolpath, we also want to carve the text. So we're going to select that as well. So you can see that automatically select the text down here. And that's all we want to carve with this toolpath. Now the last thing we want to do, which is very important, we want to associate this with the toolpath. So we're going to check this box down here. That's going to set this toolpath to automatically select anything you place on these selected layers. So let's click close to accept that. 
And now you can see down here where our vector selection is, it's now switched to automatic. So now we can calculate this, but before we do that, let's give it a name. So we'll switch it from vcarve2 to vcarve, we'll name it badge. And now we'll click calculate. And now we can preview that. So we're gonna do preview visible. And you can see that's carving all those items there. That looks very nice. So the next thing we're gonna do is edit the profile cutout that he has here. So I'm gonna double click on that toolpath to open it up. And he has this toolpath set up to go a cut depth of an eighth of an inch with the quarter inch down cut bit. And he has this going on top of the line. So we're just gonna keep all the settings he has here but the only thing we're gonna do is switch back to our 2D view and we're gonna associate that with this border here. So this is already selected for this toolpath, but we're just gonna switch it to automatic selection just in case something was to change with this border, it would be automatically associated with this toolpath. So to do that, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do selector and then we're gonna to go to close vectors and we're gonna select the border layer. And that automatically selects everything on this layer, which is only this border here. And then most importantly, we want to associate with the toolpath here. So select that. And now we're going to click close. And now you can see the vector selection switch to automatic. And he already has this named. So we're just going to click calculate. And now we'll preview selected. And you can see, there we go. We have all the toolpaths created and we have the text added in here. So now that we have all that done, we're gonna save this as a template. Now, if you plan on running this template a lot, it's best to run this on your machine and confirm everything is gonna be exactly the way you want it. That's just great practice to do to optimize your toolpaths here before you were to make a ton of copies from this template. But after you optimize everything just the way you want it, we're gonna come up to the top here, click File, and we're gonna do Save as Template. So we're gonna click that. And now we can give this template a name. So we'll just name this badge template and we're gonna click save. And now we're gonna open that template we just saved in a new file. So let's open that up. So you can see right here it is badge template. So we're gonna double click on that to open it. And you can see here's our template here. We can change our job size and our zero positions if we need to. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it the same. We're gonna click okay. And now you can see up at the top here, we're on a new file. So this is a brand new file, but since we use a template, all of our vectors are in here. All of our layers are still set up as well as all of our toolpaths. And now since these toolpaths are now automatically set up with our layers here, now if we switch back over to our design tab and when we want to change the names down here, we can select the name here, go to our text tool and this allows us to edit our text. So for this example, I could put my name here. So Kyle Yeely, and then click close to accept. And then the badge number, you can change that if you want. So select the text here, go back to our text tool and you could change the number here. So just do 555, click close. And you can see that automatically keeps the text with the same format there. It just changes whatever you type there. You can also change the font if you wanted to do that. And then you can see if we go up to the top here and we go to our text layer, if we hide that, you can see since that text was already on that layer, it's still on the layer now. So we can bring that back. And now we can switch over to our toolpath tab. And if we were to run our toolpaths again, so we'll go to preview toolpaths and we could do preview all toolpaths. You can see our old data is still showing up for that toolpath. That's because we didn't update it. So that's the only step you have to remember to do after you change the text. So we're gonna reset our preview. Easy way to do that, we're gonna close this. Right here, this button here called recalculate all toolpaths, select that. And it's gonna tell you that it did it successfully. So we're gonna click okay. And now when we go to preview toolpaths and then preview all toolpaths, 
you can see the toolpath has been updated with the new text we added here. And that's all because we have the toolpath here associated with the vectors we have on these layers. So now when you're ready to carve this, you would just save these toolpaths and you're ready to carve. And if you're only planning on carving this particular badge with this data one time, you don't even have to save this. Since we have the template saved, we can just go off that template every time. That keeps you from having to save a ton of files on your computer. You only have to have that one template and then you just change the text every time and just recalculate the toolpaths and then just save the toolpaths. So hopefully you guys learned something from this lesson. If you'd like more in-depth training on Vetric software, make sure you check out my Vetric Master Training course. And in this online course, I go in-depth how to use every feature of Vetric software. To see more lessons like these, make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can also join my Facebook group if you'd like some more personalized help with your files.